Good morning, brothers and sisters, everybody. I haven't been on for a while. I went to a ladies' retreat this last weekend, which was really, really good. It just showed me more of how amazing God's grace and unfailing love is, how he takes such horrible situations and he does such amazing things. I just, I was blown away. In the meantime, the battle gets hotter, it seems. Um, I'm kind of on the low end, so I'm not getting all the stuff that so many of you are. But I was thinking about this battle of, I was talking to a friend this weekend, and she was agreeing that the battle really is for what the true gospel is. And I don't know, I was raised knowing what the gospel was about believing on Jesus. And there were a few times where I fell into legalism a little bit, but that's not what my bottom rock foundation was. And so I've actually been rather amazed at seeing where the battle is because to me it was so obvious all my life but I wanted to you know there's so many scriptures I mean we could just go on and on there's been so much said about how our hope our total dependence is on what Jesus says and what he did for us his what he what he did and not what we did. And in 1 John, um, this is just one of many places where it says, you know, those that say that, you know, you can lose your salvation if you're not confessed up, if you haven't confessed your sins, and and how Jesus' death did not pay for our future sins. Hey, listen, all our sins when Jesus died on the cross were future, all of them. <laughs> and... That is just, I, I just, that is so ridiculous. I, it just, the arrogance of it, the arrogance to even think that we can possibly remember all the sins that we need to confess. If you have to confess all your sins after you've become a believer in order to maintain your salvation, you're not going to do it because everything that is done without faith is sin. <laughs> um, that is just arrogance. I just want to read just a little bit from yet one passage. This is in 1 John chapter 1. It says, if we, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, you're not talking to unbeliever there because they wouldn't have the truth in them at all. So if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If the truth is in us, if we that means Jesus. Jesus is the truth. If he is in us, then we're going to know that we are capable and that we sin. But, the, but he has died for all that already. And it says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, the, really, we have been forgiven already. It says that... Um, we're to forgive each other just as God in Christ has forgiven us already. We are to be who we already are. But then it says, if we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So you cannot go around saying that you, you know, I've confessed all my sins. I am sinless today or this moment what a nervous wreck you would be if you really believe that. If the people that say that you can lose your salvation if you sin and you don't confess it, if they really believe that, they would be a nervous wreck. But the fact that they aren't a nervous wreck means they really don't believe that. They believe that somehow they're, they can do it. And it says, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. If, you're, if you are a born-again believer, you're a new creature. Everybody, listen, people, you are a new creature. Remember that. 
it isn't that you've just believed something and you have it in your head. You have been made a new creature. A new creature has a new nature. Honestly, you really don't have two natures. You have the flesh, you're living in the flesh, or you're living according to your new nature. There really aren't two natures. You have the flesh and you have your new nature. You are a new creature. Now we use that term old nature because the NIV has translated it that way. But really, it says we are a new creature. We have a new nature. It's the flesh we're dealing with because we live in this, this body that somehow sin has, you know, there's the power of sin that can work in it. And one day we will have a new, even our new flesh, we'll have new, new bodies. It doesn't mean our flesh is wicked, evil of itself. It just means as we live in this world, we are subject to that power of sin but the new nature in us is Jesus Christ himself has given us his new life. Then it says, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and then get this, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. All the sins have been paid for. All of them. Even the sins that, you know, we look at people, we think of people as being the utter sinners. Hitler, Stalin, you know, we always talk about them. Jesus paid for those sins. They've been paid for. The only reason why Hitler or Stalin, if they went to hell, the only reason why they went to hell was because they did not look to Jesus and believe on him. That's the only reason. They didn't go to hell for their sins. They went to hell because they did not trust and believe on Jesus. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Now, what is the commandment? When they ask Jesus, what, you know, what is the will of God? What do I do? Believe on him whom he has sent. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. He has fulfilled those commandments. And because he is in us and we are in him, we have fulfilled them. Not because we've done it in our own flesh, in our own power, but because he has done it. Okay? And this idea that we can fulfill all those things and do everything just right in our own power is a lie of the enemy. A friend of mine, my best friend, said she made an observation, or she'd heard it from somewhere, that Eve did not eat the fruit because she was rebelling against God. She ate the fruit because she wanted to be godly. That was the lie. She believed the lie that she could do it her way and be godly. And that's the lie that people are believing, that they can do it their way and be godly. Jesus says, believe on me. Call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Believe on him whom he has sent. It is simple as that. Everybody keep looking up. He's coming. I pray he's, he's coming soon, really soon, according to what we think soon is. Hang in there. Stand firm. Trust him. Bye.